<laughs> right, yeah. Um, it, it, I've been part of the community for a good, I'd say about two years now. And um, I've been going every Tuesday for the coffee meets that we arrange. And um, I go, we go there, we meet other artists and we collaborate, we swap ideas, we do crit sessions with each other. And um, as a community, we've grown quite strong and whatnot. And we've had loads of new people come in. And um, we just got thrown up. We got told that this uh, birthday exhibition was coming on and the community all got selected and we all got given an artist statement into which we had to work as that person. And we had to give um, our artist statement to the curator, Liz, who then gave our artist statement to another artist. And then we all had to just go into this different persona of... Um, of another person. We know that he was into your persona. Oh, Who yes. did you get? I got Stephen Carley. And and what kind of person is Stephen Carley? Um, well, I don't know him personally. Um, I, I've never met the guy before. Um, but I sent him an email. We couldn't arrange a meet-up because we were both so busy. But he sent me his website. I had a good look at his website, did a bit of research, saw what his work is about and what he's about as a person. And I, for my piece, um, Wonder Boy in the Workplace, as I called it, hmm. Um, it was about my first time in retail, so I kind of used his um, his negative work to reflect my my negative experience in the retail workplace. Hmm. And you did a piece of art, mm -hmm. and then invited him to look at it. Or well, we had an opening night, but I don't think he turned up, uh -huh. from what I remember. Um, he d he had a piece of his own. Uh, I don't know who he got. He me. Oh, he got Rick. I'm yeah. just wondering how awkward it could be if someone sees inside your head and you don't like what they've seen. Well, that, that was one thing that got brought up, um, but we, there was no complaints. Everyone loved it. Everyone was just showering each other with praises. Yeah. Because of all now, you're in the, the, the studio, Dean, which you have the advantage over our listeners. You're in the studio <laughs> for BBC Radio Show for keeping out of the rain. Across the other side <laughs> of the studio here, there is the, the piece of art that the Reverend Richard Stock did of and about you. Would you describe it and then tell us how offended you are? Oh, oh I'm, I'm deeply offended. I mean, the bright colours is, is... What I'd be offended about is doing it better than I do, to be honest. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's bright colours. He's got all my characters. I was able to tell which characters were which. And Can you explain characters? Yes. Um, my, my work is kind of reflected on, like, random little inspirations. For example, the famous compun companion bag, which is in the corner there. He was um, he was dedicated to a bag that just flew around me and my friends when we were waiting by a train station. Mm -hmm. So I took this piece of litter that was flying around us and I just turned it into this child childlike character. And he's now quite famous amongst the community now. <laughs> Who but else is on the picture? We got, You're there in the middle of the picture. I'm there in the middle. Um, we have Cactus Banana, Jam the Bear, Veg the Vegetarian Zombie, Caboose the Ninja, Lemon the Sponge, Cotton Carnage... Um, Mr. Poe, the beach devotee, the infuser, uh, poots, which are goat pigeons. Uh, These are a series of your creations <laughs> floating round your head as, you, as you stroke your chin thoughtfully. <laughs> yeah, is, that is it, yes. With my rainbow stitches. Yes, what are they then? I've actually got rainbow stitches tattooed on my arm. Right. Yeah, it's just We're like going to put some of these up uh, on, on our, <laughs> so people can actually look at them. We'll put them on our web pages yeah, and fun, things. Yeah, so, Rick, what do you make of what you achieved and what, what the purpose well, is? Well, listening to Dean, you can see why it sent me a little bit crazy making, <laughs> <laughs> making this painting. I mean, my normal style is to create kind of, I suppose, brooding portraits and, and, and uh, in, in oil paints and uh, figures and so on. And, and Dean's cartoon characters with all their kind of strange, the strange world they inhabit. Well, you've done just that with him, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's stroking his chin a little uneasy. Yeah, well, <laughs> while I, I, all these there, things... there was something uneasy about it as well, I think. And, and I didn't want to paint Dean as a cartoon character. You know, he is fun, he is mm -hmm. vibrant, but he's not a cartoon character. There's a depth to him. Obviously. I'm a real boy. He's a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wanted to get that, that contrast between all this weird and wonderful stuff coming out of his head. His head kind of flips up and all these things are coming out. But actually, there's a real person in the midst of all this.
And I think you hinted early on in our first bit of the conversation that this idea of, as it were, walking in somebody else's shoes or being in oh, somebody yes, else's yes. head as a kind of meaning beyond just a bit of fun celebrating a third birthday. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think it, it, it has been more than a bit of fun just for us. I mean, it's been quite a profound experience to, to really deeply encounter another person. But in our, in our why, I mean, the, the, the world we're living in today, particularly in this country, after, after the Brexit vote, whatever way you voted, that the country is more divided th than ever what along did, all kinds of What did someone lines. draw or paint of you, Richard? <laughs> well, actually, Stephen Carley did, did a conceptual piece on me. I don't really do conceptual. It's a blank work. screen, or it, it, it's a almost blank a blank screen. screen. Is it really? <laughs> it's almost. <laughs> <a blank. laughs> but it, it, you, you have to come down to thirty-five chapters oh, well. to, to, to experience it. But it, actually, when I when I saw it, I was really unsettled because it got right to the heart of what, the way the way I paint and why I paint. So I was really disturbed by it. Actually, <laughs> you're brilliant. I'm sure we're trying for some of this on social media. Thanks ever so Cheers. much for coming in this morning. No uh, I've been cheering listeners up this morning with the prospect that the world is about to end in an hour uh, and asking them what they do with the last hour. There's a bloke who's won a film award with it. Uh, what would you do with your last hour if Ooh, you only had an hour to go? Hour. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, that's quite on the spot there. I don't know. Yeah, I've gone on the spot. <laughs> would, you, would you do a painting, Dean, or would you Ooh. have a run in the park? Or? Well, I, I don't know. Probably just run around singing. Even. Oh, no, actually, no. I'll probably have a cup of tea. Cup of tea. Cup of tea and watch it happen. Rick, what yeah. would you do? Well, I'd love to join Dean for a cup of tea, but I'd go and see my kids and tell them that I love them. All right. Well, oh, I suppose really. form my family and say, Yeah, you're too late. You're too late. You tried, but you're too late. After the very much. Uh, it's uh, Rick Starr and Dean Judd, and it's BBC Radio Sheffield. Thank you both ever so much for joining us on BBC Radio Sheffield. Uh, that exhibition, I'll give you the details out in just a moment. BBC Radio Sheffield.